Hi everyone, today we have this A1990 that came in with no power. Uh, the customer brought it to an Apple store and an Apple authorized service provider and they both said that the board is totally done and that data recovery is not possible on something like this. So let's go over diagnosing this and um, we'll see what we get on this. So the battery's unplugged and everything. I just want to see what we get on USB-C because that's going to tell us a lot about what's going on with the board. So I plug in the charger and I see we're getting 5 volts and 0 amps on USB-C. Now, a very common presentation of a short on PPBus G3 Hot is going to be 5 volts and 0 amps because the charger and the battery charge controller sees that the device is pulling too much current and does not allow uh, the uh, charger to output 20 volts because that would be bad if you have a short. So another common thing that will cause that is going to be uh, T2 firmware corruption. Uh, it's very easy to rule out. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and check for a short on PPBus G3 Hot here. So we have our meter. Should be in frame. I'm going to measure on uh, this fuse right here. It's very important that you make sure your battery and charger is disconnected. And we have a dead short to ground. So that's a 0 0.2 ohm short to ground or 0 ohm. The 2 tenths of an ohm are just from the meter lead. So at this point, we've got to pull the board out and we will um, inject some voltage and do some thermal imaging and go from there. All right, our logic board is out of the enclosure. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So with any short, um, what I'm gonna do is inject some voltage. Uh, I always start at a low voltage on PPBus G3 Hot because if the issue is a shorted CPU MOSFET, if we inject eight volts right away, we're gonna kill our CPU. So we're gonna start at one volt and see if anything gets hot and see what um, amperage we take. And then we will uh, up it from there if we cannot see anything. So I'm going to Plug in my DC power supply. We're going to go one volts even. And I'm going to solder this wire to the two PP bus fuses right here. So right here, we want to ch uh, choose a nice big contact point. I see a lot of people solder it to like a little capacitor or something. And that capacitor is not going to carry current. So that's going to be no good. Alright, that should be soldered. Nope. It's a big thick wire that has a lot of thermal mass. Okay, so I am going to cl uh, clip my other alligator lead to one of the grounding points on the board. And we're pulling 5 amps at 1 volt. That is, that's a lot of current. So I'm going to grab my thermal imager here. And we're going to just look around the board and see if I see anything. We'll always see the area where we're injecting voltage getting hot. That's normal. And it looks like the corner, let's see, you guys probably can't see it, but the corner of the board right here is getting extremely hot. So I'm going to have a look over there. Let's switch to microscope view. And I'm going to put a little alcohol in this area and see what we can see. Kind of moving my wire away for now. So here's the area that we were getting um, heat from. This looks okay right here. I don't see anything here. This capacitor, you can normally see when a ceramic capacitor is shorted. This might have an issue. I don't know. These capacitors do look like they've been a little oxidized before. And there's some rust on that coil. What about on this side? Now, if you see here, there's a lot of dust here, and look at that. So, this is something people don't understand. Dust and hair and, and stuff like that really affect, the, what, what ends up happening is if you live in a humid environment, the water is going to condense right here. And when water condenses there, or moisture condenses, you get issues like this. So here's a capacitor. 
that this is most likely the cause of our short. So I'm just going to do this. Try and just flick it off. Just like that. And let's see if our short is gone. So we are going to measure on PP bus again. All right, here's our meter. And no more short. So it went up to 500 ohms and kept going. So no more short and that capacitor is our issue. Let's go ahead and have a look and see what that capacitor is for. We probably don't even need it, um, but let's go ahead and have a look. All right, here's our board view. Um, it's going to be, looks like this one right here. And this is going to be a PP bus voltage in. It's just a decoupling capacitor. There's another one right here. Uh, it's not really needed, but I will replace it. Um, stuff like this you really don't need. It's, it's just a decoupling capacitor. All this capacitor is going to do is, so you might have a little ripple going in, right? Little tiny ripple, and it's just going to smooth it out a little bit. It does almost nothing. You could leave these off safely. It's not going to affect the longevity of the board or anything. Uh, but I will go ahead and replace it. So we're going to want to clean up this area really well because the root cause of this failure is going to be dust. Uh, believe it or not, the dust uh, caused some hum uh, humidity, to con humidity to condense right there and that led to the capacitor failing. So we're going to clean this up really well. Put a little flux down. kind of in a hard spot because of that uh, the cylinder thing here that's for board stability but I can get solder in there let's go ahead and grab a new capacitor alright we have our new capacitor we're gonna go ahead and put it on Pull it from the donor board first. Should be good to go. I just want to touch this up a little bit because this looks a little bit ugly right here. That should be good to go. Um, let's give the board a overview. The rest of it an overview because you never know if there's going to be anything else corroded. This device was not liquid damaged. This is just corrosion from dust buildup and condensation. But we are going to inspect the rest of it just to make sure there's nothing else that we need to address. So I'm just going to clean this flux up. The rest of the board looks fairly clean. All right, so we have a little bit of corrosion right here. So we'll clean that up. You're one of the CD3215s. But that's not too severe. Look on this side. Willing to bet that this device came from a humid environment. Yeah, just on that probe point right there. Notice it's where the dust is again, so we will be cleaning the dust out of this. That's for sure.
that should be good to go. I'm not concerned about corrosion under any chips. Uh, you don't typically see that with um, with uh, condensation damage devices, so I'm not going to ultrasonic this. Um, it's it's not necessary, not if it, if not unless there was liquid ingress. Um, so we should be good to go here. Um, let's go ahead and put this board back in the uh, enclosure and see if it boots into an OS. All right, our board is back in the enclosure and we have a fully fixed MacBook with the data fully recovered. So remember that no matter who tells you that it's not possible or can't be done, there's always hope there. So in this case, if you get told by Apple that your data is gone and you can't get it back, always seek a second opinion because there's a good chance your data can still be uh, brought back by somebody that knows what they're doing. So thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you with your problem in some way.